Hello, Mr. Laurie, cousins. Hello there. <laughs> so this is our GM, Laurie. This is the first time that you've GM'd Dark Heresy, or even played Dark Heresy, in fact. Yes. You're familiar with the tabletop board game itself. You you do play that yourself, don't yes, you? Yes, I do play Eldar. from the UK. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find the system to be? Well, it plays in a very similar way to how Warthrop did. So. It's not much of a change over, but it's pretty much like the difference between Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k. In 40k, there's a lot more weapons to remember. So in Heresy, we've got a lot of weapons, a lot of energy types, or rather damage types that those weapons can deal. So that's a lot to take in, even for the players. Mm. Especially that's what can draw combat out a lot, I guess, what they mm. say. Also, the ranges are a lot more imperative. You've got multi-ranges, yes. haven't you? And you've got the fire modes on all of the guns as well. Yes, we're all that. Semi, semi, auto, full, full automatic, auto. single shot. Yeah. With all that, it can be difficult to remember what you, what gun you're using, what fire setting you want to use it with, and even what ammo you want to use with it in some cases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the shot, shotgun that our arbitrator has, he's got himself some inferno shells. Depending on what time he decides to use them, he may not remember if he's what if what they do. What for you? As, as a GM, was the most fun thing for you to experience in the session today? What was your favourite part? I mean, there's this one point when Jericho opens a door and he's absolutely not affected by what's behind it. And he closes the door. Morbid gore, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, lo lots of gore. Pretty much, it was a minus 10 on the dice roll to begin with. Anyone else might have just failed that roll, but Jericho, it doesn't bother him. He closes the door and like, eh, they got a nice paint job in there kind of reaction. He stares at all the blood and guts and stuff, and instead of seeing dead bodies and having the normal horrific reaction where he's been mind cleansed and he's been altered and it's had its particular effect on his psyche, he instead sees the patterns the blood might make. And pretty much everyone's reaction to that is like, okay, Jericus, you're completely mad. They all think he's mad, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty much, he's at one point got his head to the ground, and then he's into the wall, and he's trying to hear what's coming, what could be up ahead. And everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it's a pretty simple thing someone should do anyway, testing to hear things. Mm -hmm. But in the 40th millennium, people don't think that's a little bit strange. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so, well, we've got scanners for that. We don't need you listening on the wall to see what's up ahead. So really, your favourite thing is, what, the, the, the role play then? Pretty much how people react off Today. of each other, yeah. Is there anything in particular else that you, um, RP wise, that you, you thought was a good example of what you liked? Well, um, <laughs> the scum has particularly just decided that she's going to steal everything that isn't nailed down. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was quite funny. That was quite good, wasn't she, it? She, she even took off with the commissar's hat for pity's sake. Just because it was hanging up. That's the commissar's hat. I think he's going to notice that it's missing. She just doesn't give a damn, does she? The player's not scared of like what might happen to the character because the character is just so characterful. <laughs> just walks off or whatever's there. Mm, it's great. It's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to. Uh, oh, I've to got have that, that mouse trap in the yeah. corner. <laughs> yeah, she she looted the mouse wiring. Trap. A mouse trap, wasn't it? She looted yeah. an actual mouse. She took trap. a mouse trap out the corner. She said, "Is there any loose wiring?" I'm like, "Um, there's a bit." It's a, deciding that we're going to make some sort of detonator out of the mouse trap, some wiring, and. And whatever the hell else you could pick up. Yeah, yeah. That, that for me was just one of the moments that if bonus RP experience has been given out, that's one of the things I would be giving out for because that entertained me. What for you do you think you most had difficulty with or least enjoyed from the session? Well, because it's a pre-written and it's a beta adventure, adventure as well, it's something that has very little details in it. I have to wing a hell of a lot more than I would like to. Whilst winging it can be a good thing, in some cases you end up with a 
lot of trouble depending on what it is. I mean, there's not a lot of character background for the NPCs, so you've got to try and make stuff up if players start asking a lot more questions than what you're expected or prepared to try and answer. Even if there is a little bit in the book and you can wing off of that, you, if you have trouble, if you've got a lot of questions coming straight at you one after the other, and you're not prepared to answer them really, I, I had that much trouble just with one section. I was just sat there I was like, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> I'm confused with myself. I can't, I can't actually continue with this questioning. I've got to try and figure out a way to come out of it. When it gets like that, that was, then we had that today and that kind of threw my game off really in a way. So I wasn't really as prepared as I would have liked to have been for that situation. From my point of view, there was, there was a couple of moments where the, where the game stopped and, and you were looking in a book to try and make sense of things. And mm. Really all you needed to do really was make a GM's call, wasn't it? To, there and then. You couldn't find like, the answer to the thing very easily. And yeah, well, I, I thought I had looked, seen it before, but I was like, I can't find it right now. I'm sure there was something in there about this, but maybe I'm reading about something else, I not, don't know. Not having the weapons proficiency and what sort of yeah. minus, whether that means you can fire it at a minus or not fire it at all. But then again, I might be get, might have been getting confused with another game system that I've read up on, and I might be getting confused with that and be like, oh, okay, whatever, let's just make a GM's call on this thing so right maybe, now. Maybe it could have meant that it can't even be used or whatever. Maybe, I don't know. I'd have to look directly under weapon training but at that time, or for example, while I was, well, I just decided, okay, let's just run with this for the moment, and if I come across it later, then I'll uh, switch to that. And I suppose you could have explained it away that they could have just tried using it in a, in a panic or whatever. Mm. Well, it was the first thing they grabbed at hand and they got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose if they really weren't trained in it, yeah. I haven't GM'd in a while as well, so I'm a bit rusty again there. You were a little bit nervous about where to drop us in, where to start the session. Now this is a really good point actually. Where sessions should start, because it's that especially when you're meeting together as a group for the first time ever, because they might have a little bit of an idea of who their characters are, having done maybe some solo play, yeah. or at least have had a chat with you as a GM about it one-to-one. -one. Once they all meet each other for the first time, that, that first initial um, dialogue between each other, how to handle that, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And it can be a little awkward, I suppose. I suppose for you, it was, it was a case of where do, we, where do you drop the players in? Yes. You drop them in on the ship, travelling, would they have got to know known each other over the weeks, days, however long the the, the journey was for the for that, or do they only get to know yes. each other once they land at the place where they are they're first been sent? So we got around that in the end by the players themselves, pretty much out of character, explaining who their characters were to the rest of the table. Well, the description in the mission said that that's pretty much the characters have been together several weeks. So they pretty much do probably know each other's names, at least first names, if not last names as well, and possible quirks and other, maybe a little bit of backstory. We got by okay with that, with them just giving a synopsis on, on who each of them were to the rest of the group, out of character. Yeah. Because you can include a lot of things, have a little bit of fun with your explanations. Everything in life and everything we do is a learning experience, and the more we do it, the better we get at it. As a result, from today's first session of Heresy ever for you, what do you think you've learnt to take away from it to add to the next one that you could maybe pass on to another prospective GM that might be about to play this? Pretty much try and cover all your bases. I mean, even if the book doesn't give you a lot to work with, or if it gives you too much to work with, I don't know. But in some cases you don't get enough, you, don't, you get what's in the box and not much else. You don't get any extra pieces to work off of. So, it's pretty much try and prepare as much as you can for what you think this character, this NPC, or whatever situation is going to be like. Because if you can work that off of what the PCs try to do, then you can actually help enrich both the gameplay and what the PCs experience, what the players are pee off of, what they might they might even come up with new stuff, to, new ideas of what they might do in a certain situation, what they might say to someone. The next one's a lot longer with more NPCs in there, so I need to differentiate how each NPC acts, what they might do in a certain situation, or even 
what might come about depending on what the PC se the characters, the players, even say or do. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, Jericus, for example, might come up with something that involves something completely out there that makes no sense to what's in the book. Jericus is a wild card to begin with, so <laughs> whatever he does, what I've seen from this PlayStation, what he's tried to do, has thrown a lot of what would be in the book off anyway. Yeah, I mean, what he was prepared to do today, for instance, if necessary, was there was the Prometheum. He said that, look, if he can find a sealant blast door, he yeah. can create a, an explosion, thus destroying anything if it was too powerful. Because uh, even though logic tells me as a player that I'd be facing something that rank ones can fight, my character shouldn't know that. Exactly. Piece player knowledge versus character knowledge. So he thinks to himself, well, it could be something down here that's impossible for us. I want to... I, I'm going to suggest that, that, that if we see a blast door, maybe creating a triggered explosion, a timed controlled explosion, and take the entire floor out. Unfortunately, there was no blast door, so I... Ha so... Doing that would, of course, the entire place to blow up and probably killing every character in the in the game to begin with. Yeah. Let alone everything else. Well, I wouldn't mean, like I say. I would have only tried pushing that idea onwards if it had been an enemy that was indeed. Now, if there was a blast door option in there somewhere, then I could have let Jerkus do that from the beginning and lay. We finished. <laughs> yeah, like we did with Woofer at that time with uh, with Maestro in the drop. Exactly at the portal. That I actually built that into what what was needed to be done, listen, this is a focus for what's being done here. If you can do that before anything else, you've pretty much just finished the mission. Otherwise you've got to do a lot more. How many times do you think you're going to be reading the core rule book's adventure storyline before you run it within a Over next the next fortnight? few weeks or so, it's probably fortnight. quite a lot more. A lot more than I already have. <laughs> So you've looked at it several times. Yeah, I'm probably going to need to look at it probably a f quite a few more times as it is. How well would you say you know it from, from me, from the amount you've looked at it? I can run it as its base, pretty much. I can run it from its skeleton, but... You want to run it with flair instead? Yeah. If, if flair is required, because some characters might throw a spanner in the works and flair will be required... Hmm. I mean, this mission carries, is written in the book that even carries on straight on after Shattered Hope. Running it with just a skeletal base, when characters will come up and throw that base and say, okay, here's what I want to do, and then that goes off completely from what the adventure is. Yeah. If you can work something in there, if you can wing something to bring, take them off on that tangent path that brings them straight back into the adventure at the right point, then that's a good thing you can do. That's would, a good GMing tool. I would say a very skilled GM will well, let it run its course in such a way that the players never realised that it wasn't in the book. Exactly. Like, let's say, um, the sister. So something happens that comes along with her uh, background RP that she seems to think is important, even though it's got nothing to do with the story. She has to follow that to its end, and then bringing that as in part of the main story, without it actually being part of the main story, that that's a good GMing tool. I mean, I've seen and heard about all these gems, how they wing stuff for party members of double the size of what I'm trying to do. For a four-person party. Yeah. And I've seen people, or heard of people, g GMing and winging it for people of eight-person eight party. And coming up with their own monsters on the spot, changing, creating their own dungeon straight off the bat, without even any reference to what, they, what it is. So, people who can do that, I applaud them. <laughs> Because even I have trouble just trying to wing even a small section right now. But, as I said before, I'm a little bit rusty on my GMing. I haven't GMed in a while, so I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. Mm. Well, thanks very much for your chat and insight into the session. And I'm sure we'll uh, stop back in on you as the Dark Heresy vlog series continues. Thanks very much, Laurie. You're welcome.